Good morning, folks. So, as you can see, here we are in the chapel, and we're getting ready for the church this morning. It's about uh, five minutes to the hour, six minutes to the hour. We'll be beginning right at 10 o'clock. Uh, but as we've been doing, as you come in, uh, please uh, give a wave, say hello, put a comment in the box, let us know that you are here. So good morning again. It is 9.55. We'll be getting started with worship in just about five minutes. Uh, again, as you come in, please uh, put a comment in the box, give a wave, uh, a like, something like that. Let us know that you're here. Good morning. So good morning, folks. We're going to be getting started with worship here in just about three minutes. As you come in, please uh, put a comment in the box. Let us know that you're here. We'll be getting started with worship soon. Good morning, Val. Good morning. Morning, Jan. Good to see y'all. We'll be getting started with worship here in just about two minutes. So, again, as you come in, please um, put a comment in the box, hit the like button, something just to let us know that you are here. As we you know, prepare for worship this morning, a reminder that today is going to be a little bit different. Uh, you saw the order of worship that we're doing a healing service this morning. You know, it reminds me that the last time that I was here for Sunday worship uh, back in March, we also had a healing service, and that was the last time that we were together uh, as a church community. And so it somehow feels appropriate this morning 
that will have a healing service as part of this worship. Um, just to be mindful that uh, the order of worship is a little bit different this morning uh, because of that. Uh, hopefully you have it and have a chance to kind of follow along uh, as we get started with, or as we go through with worship today. Also a reminder that we will be having coffee hour uh, just after worship. Uh, it'll take me a little bit of time to get stuff from here in the chapel over to my office because the Wi-Fi is not really working here this morning, um, but, uh, but that will be starting right after, uh, after worship. So it's 10 o'clock and I'm just ring the bell, light the candle, and we'll get ready for worship. So good morning again, and welcome to worship at First Congregational Church in Stoneham. No matter who you are or where you are along the journey of life, uh, may there be a place of home, of welcome, of refuge for you here. Whether you are watching us live this morning or whether you are watching us on the replay later on today or later on this week, know that you are welcome here. As I was saying a minute ago, our service this morning is a little bit different. Uh, we're having a healing service today, which only feels appropriate between uh, the virus and the exposure of racial injustice in our country. Uh, it felt really important to me uh, to have a healing service. And also, as I was saying, there's a, a kind of rightness to this as the last time that we gathered as a community uh, was for a healing service. And so here we are this morning uh, to worship. Here we are to celebrate God's desire for healing. Here we are together. So please join me in our call to worship. Come Holy Spirit, the wind of God, the breath of life. Come Holy Spirit, our advocate, our counselor, Come, Holy Spirit, teacher of wisdom, reminder of Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, grantor of forgiveness, giver of peace. Come, Holy Spirit, may we feel God breathing through our worship. May we receive the Holy Spirit in this place. Amen. And so we pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for gathering us together this morning. And thank you for being with us through all of the ups and downs of life. For the many blessings that you give us and for your healing power at work in us. You know the disease that plagues our hearts and our lives. You're well aware of the pandemics of COVID-19 and racism that threaten our lives and threaten to tear us apart. And yet, we know your desire for us. We know your desire for our world is healing. Be with us in this hour. Empower us to celebrate your healing in such powerful ways that even though we are separated in physical presence, that your spirit flowing in us and through us will bring healing. And not only will your spirit bring healing to those of us who gather here, to those of us who are watching this service this morning online, but also that your healing may extend to all creation, 
For we pray and trust through your most precious name. Amen. Our modern testimony this morning is The Peace of Wild Things by Wendell Berry. When despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound, in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water, and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things, who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day-blind stars waiting for their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. Our ancient testimony this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were helpless and harassed like sheep without a shepherd. These words are breathed into us by the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Beloved, would you pray with me? God of our hope, God of our longing, you have gathered here us here once again on this platform this morning where we can be together even though we remain physically distant from each other. And God, as we gather, we too confess it's been a hard few weeks, dear God. It's been a hard few months. Between the virus that keeps ravaging communities across our nation to the old festering wounds of racism erupting with the murders of our black and brown siblings, Richard Brooks, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Justin Howell, Sean Monterosa, Jamel Floyd, and countless others. God, we turn to you this morning to be our strength and our guide, to be our hope and our healing, to be our light and our salvation. Let your words sink deeply into our hearts, and may they take root with such deep ferocity that our actions cannot help but to build up your kingdom on earth. For we pray in the name of Jesus, our sibling, our teacher, and our redeemer. Amen. So, 
as we get started with the sermon this morning, I want to acknowledge that one thing is different, obviously. Actually, there's a few things that are different this morning. Being here in this space, being in full vestments, and sitting down. And I want to say that the choice of sitting down this morning is an intentional choice. Because I feel like the message that God has placed in my heart to share with you all this morning is one that is hard to deliver and one that may well be hard to receive. And because it's hard to deliver and because it may be hard to receive, I am choosing to stay grounded in this chair. I am choosing to stay grounded with my feet on the floor, and I would invite you, my dear siblings, to likewise remain grounded as you hear these words, to remain grounded as we ponder what God might be calling us to together. You know, last week I began this training for coaches who are working with other clergy and congregations and who will be working with other clergy and congregations as they respond to COVID-19 and the aftermath of grief and loss that is coming as a result of this pandemic. Now I realized on the first day of the training that this was really the first time that I had to hear stories from a lot of different clergy folks reflecting on their ministry and on their experience of ministry in this time of pandemic. And I have to say that it was both relieving and burdensome to hear the stories of my colleagues in ministry. It was both relieving and it was burdensome to hear the stories of my colleagues in ministry. Now, it was relieving because it really helped to hear how many of my colleagues were experiencing ministry at this time and about how our, how our experience resonated. I mean, it really helped to hear that as it turns out, feeling like everything takes about five times as long to do is a common experience among my colleagues. It's not just me. I mean, even coming here this morning, getting set up for worship, took so much more time than it would usually take on a Sunday morning, and that's but one example. And so it felt really relieving to hear that my colleagues were experiencing something similar. However, it was also burdensome. It was burdensome to hear some of the stories from my colleagues because, you see, for as much as the creative struggles and the adaptations have caused me to shift and pivot on a nearly daily basis and to spend hours trying to learn how to edit videos for broadcasting, many of my colleagues have been dealing with a good bit more. Many of my colleagues have been dealing with a good bit more. Now, one of my colleagues in that training 
who happened to be one of the few people of color in our cohort, as we were going around for check-in, held up that for her, in her community, and in her experience of ministry, that there were not just one, but two pandemics to deal with at this time. There was not just one pandemic, but there were two pandemics for her and for her community to deal with at this time. I mean, there was, of course, the pandemic of COVID-19, the pandemic that we have all been dealing with since March, if not slightly before. And there was the pandemic, there is the pandemic of the raw exposition of racism prompted by the murder of George Floyd. And by the way, it didn't end with Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, of course. The other names that I mentioned before, Justin Howell, Sean Monterosa, Jamel Floyd, and Rayshard Brooks have all died at the hands of police officers since George Floyd's brutal murder. Now, I dare to say, beloved siblings, that all of us have been impacted by these two pandemics. All of us have been impacted by these two pandemics because they impact our communities in such fundamental ways. Now, granted, some of us have been more vulnerable. Some of us have been more exposed during both pandemics. And we have all been impacted on one level or another. We are tender in these times. We are hurting. Our siblings inside the church and outside the church are also tender. Our siblings, whether they are locked in their homes or protesting on the streets, are also hurting. Our world, beloved, is tender. Our world is hurting. Now this morning, our gospel reading jumps all the way back from the end of Matthew's gospel where we were last week to the beginning of the commissioning of the disciples. All the way back to Matthew chapter 9 when Jesus first sent the disciples on mission. And even though I pulled out but a small section of the reading that was given in the lectionary, what is clear, even from these few verses, about the mission on which Jesus sends the disciples, is that it is the very mission that Jesus has dedicated himself as well to. The mission of healing. The mission of healing and the mission of proclaiming the message of the good news that an entirely new way of relating to one another, that an entirely new way of relating to all of our siblings was being initiated. The kingdom of God So I have to tell y'all a story. You know, I was starting to get this inkling um, about a week or so ago that it was about time to do a healing service. Part of that is that in the last year, it's just become a practice. You know, if the mission of Jesus is primarily a mission of healing, it just feels right that we practice healing in worship. 
So I had this idea kind of brewing in the back of my mind. Uh, honestly, it feels like the least that we can do at this point in history to stand publicly and declare God's desire for healing. However, I wasn't really sure how it would work to do a healing service virtually. So all of, the back, all of this was in the back of my mind as we had the uh, fellowship Zoom call on Wednesday. Now one of the participants on that Zoom call shared some thoughts about how a virtual healing service might happen. And while they were sharing, I looked up the gospel reading for today. And I saw this passage from Matthew's gospel. This passage that talked about Jesus going to the cities and villages, teaching and proclaiming and curing every disease and every illness. Well, when I heard that bit about Jesus curing every disease and every illness, I knew that it was indeed time to celebrate this healing service. And what I would invite us to consider, dear siblings, as we prepare to celebrate this healing service in just a moment, is what it needs healing in our own lives. To take a fierce inventory and see what needs healing for ourselves right now in this moment of time. Because you see, just like the disciples, God wants to send us out into the world to be instruments of healing. And God will use us as instruments of love and healing and grace, no matter what. And, as the late Henry Nouwen would say, we are all wounded healers. And just as we look at what needs healing in the world, what needs healing in the lives of our siblings, God first calls us to be healed ourselves. And then as we are healed ourselves, then we can ponder who in our world is in need of God's healing. Both who in our small worlds of our daily lives, our daily experience, and who in our big world. Who in our big world is suffering? Who in our big world needs the healing touch of God? And then finally, one other question. And this question, dear siblings, might make many of us a little bit uncomfortable. We are also called to examine our hearts and our lives and to ask ourselves what are the ways, perhaps even unconsciously, that we, dear siblings, have benefited, benefited from or contributed to racism. What are the ways in which we have benefited, benefited from or contributed to racism in our country? I mean, where can we ask forgiveness? And where can we commit not only not to be racist, but to be anti-racist for the sake of our siblings who are suffering, for the sake of the kingdom of God? Where can we be healed? Beloved siblings, these times are heavy with despair for the world as Wendell Berry puts it. We are all being impacted by COVID-19 and by the American legacy of racism. And God desires 
healing. God desires a place where all are held in esteem, where all are healed and made whole. That is what the kingdom of God is all about. God desires a place where all are held in esteem, where all are healed and made whole. And that, dear siblings, is the hope that we hold out for. That is the hope that we celebrate this morning. Amen. As we enter into this liturgy of healing, let us take just a moment of silent reflection to consider what needs healing in ourselves, what needs healing for our siblings in the world, and where have we contributed to racism in this country? Please join me in the unison prayer of confession. God of all times, we come into your presence asking your forgiveness and healing. We have failed to live as people of the present. We have failed to live as people of peace. Despite our best efforts and deepest intentions, we have contributed to the scourge of racism in ways that we might recognize and in ways that we avoid recognizing we have made ourselves superior to others we have wasted our moments wanting the future now seeing our dreams as an answer to, to today's problems rather than seeing your blessing in each day. We have looked backward to glory days that seem only glorious in their passing. Open our eyes to our mission at hand. Open our ears to your message to us today that we might share in bringing the good news of your peace to the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. And now, we pray that God might prepare us for the healing that God wants to bring to us through this encounter with the living Christ. O God of all comfort, our help in time of need, we humbly ask you in your power to strengthen us and to heal us. Look upon us with your mercy. Comfort us with the assurance of your care and goodness. Save us from temptation and despair. Give us patience under affliction. And enable us to live in peace through Jesus Christ, who came that we may have life in abundance. Amen. So I want to say a little bit about how the healing Piece is going to work this morning obviously we can't have folks come up to be anointed however there is this mantra of healing that you see in the uh, the order of service the may I be filled with faith may I be a source of hope may I be aligned with love so what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this mantra a few times the first time that we that we say this mantra we're going to be saying it for ourselves. 
May I be filled with faith. May I be a source of hope. May I be aligned with love. And in the second time, I would invite us to call to mind somebody who has been directly impacted. Now, it can either be by the, the virus or it could be by racism in our country, but to bring to mind a particular person who has been impacted. And in the second time, we'll say, may you be filled with faith. May you be a source of hope. May you be aligned with love. And in the third time that we go through this, we're going to say it for all of our world. And in that time, we will say, may we be filled with faith. May we be a source of hope. May we be aligned with love. And the point here, beloved, is that, of course, we have to start with our own healing. But then we have to go out to the world. Because until we are all healed, until our world is healed, none of us are really whole. And so I'm going to ring the bell, and then I will go through the phrases. And as we go through the phrases, you might want to close your eyes, sense your feet on the floor, and notice yourself being surrounded by the white light of the Holy Spirit, sending that light to the person that you call to mind, sending that light to the world. And so let us be together as we call upon God's Spirit to heal us and to heal our world. May I be filled with faith. May I be filled with faith. May I be a source of hope. May I be a source of hope. May I be aligned with love. May I be aligned with love. calling to mind somebody who has been directly impacted by the pandemic of this virus, by the pandemic of racial injustice. May you be filled with faith. May you be filled with faith. May you be a source of hope. May you be a source of hope. May you be aligned with love. May you be aligned with love. And calling to mind the whole world, 
all of creation in sending the healing light of the Holy Spirit to all beings in all directions. We pray. May we be filled with faith. May we be filled with faith. May we be a source of hope. May we be a source of hope. May we be aligned with love. May we be aligned with love. I would invite us to sit for a moment longer, aware of this healing light aware of the healing of the Holy Spirit that surrounds us, that surrounds those who have been impacted by the virus, those who have been impacted by racial injustice and by the whole world. We sit for a moment longer. as we celebrate God's healing desire for us, we can't help but call to mind our deep solidarity, our prayers for all of the world. And so we present our needs before God. Holy and incarnate one, at whose unexpected touch the ordinary world is charged with the Holy Spirit, Hear us as we pray. For those who seek your accompaniment, for those whose hardship is overwhelming, who cannot find you, those who live in poverty, anxiety, and hunger, those whose lives are fearful or long, lonely, for our siblings who are exploited, exhausted, or ill. And so we cry out, come, Holy Spirit, and renew the face of the earth. We pray especially for those who remain on the front lines of the global pandemic of COVID-19, as well as those who remain on the front lines of the pandemic of racism for healthcare workers, for facility workers, and for those workers whose lives and health will be uncertain, whose lives and health are uncertain as states continue to reopen. As well, we pray for those who are most vulnerable during this health crisis, the elderly, communities of color, immigrants, refugees, the homeless, those who are without adequate housing, nutrition, and access to testing and treatment, and so we cry out, come, Holy Spirit, and renew the face of the earth. We pray for those whose ambitious ambition is overwhelming, who do not want to find you, whose lives are choked with overwork or consumption, who have chosen an unreal path, who have hardened their hearts. We pray, too, for those whose hearts and lives have been distorted because of racism and bigotry, 
And especially we pray for our siblings whose lives have been cut short and who live in fear because of their race, gender, sexual orientation, national origin, or any of the ways that we create division amongst ourselves. And so we cry out, come Holy Spirit, and renew the face of the earth. We pray for those who have begun to find you, O God, and are overwhelmed, for whom the risk of a new way of living is too painful, who are afraid of your embrace and fear your energetic power to reconstitute the world. And so we cry out, come, Holy Spirit, and renew the face of the earth. And we pray in silence for those whose needs, which we hold in the depths of our heart. And so we cry out, calm Holy Spirit, renew the face of the earth. In gathering all of our prayers and praises into one voice, we pray in the way of Jesus, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So now is the time in our service that we make return to God. Now, this is often in worship done by the means of passing the collection plate. And of course, there are opportunities, there are ways to support the work of the church. As you saw from Judy's uh, email last week, now is a very important time to support the work of the church. And, of course, we're aware that it's not the only way that God invites us to make return. And so we pause to consider how is God inviting each of us individually to make our offering today? Please join me in our prayer of thanksgiving. Holy One, thank you for gathering us together this morning. Thank you for the healing that you have extended to us and thank you for the healing that you extend to our world through us. As we go forth from this place, give us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be instruments of hope and love in our world, for we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, before we, uh, before, yeah, we offer the benediction to one another, uh, just want to remind you that, of course, the Zoom coffee hour will be beginning in just a few minutes, as soon as I can get this equipment back over to my office. Uh, we'll be getting, beginning the coffee hour. And I wanted to share this too with you um, this morning. As I was driving into church, I was listening to, uh, to a podcast and at the end of the podcast, the uh, author was talking about how he saw where kids had kind of written in the sidewalk and uh, chalk, uh, stay six feet apart, but stay closer to each other than ever. May we stay six feet apart, and may we stay closer to each other than ever. And so let us offer to each other this benediction. As we continue to wade through these uncertain waters, may our ups outweigh our downs today. May every minor victory feel like a breath of fresh air. May, we every, may every breath we take Remind us that hope is real. May we know that God goes ever before us, leading the way. 
and we go forth, beloved, for now our service really begins. Thanks be to God. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Again, coffee hour will be beginning in just a few minutes. Peace be with you now and this week until we meet again. Amen.